back to Finnegan's Garage. Thanks for hanging out. This is a special episode. Uh, by the time you watch this, Drag Week 2024 will be over. We'll have just gotten home. I'm recording it a couple days before I leave for Drag Week because there's some things that need to be fixed on this car. Namely, 10-year-old wiring that has been added to, subtracted from, and currently there's a towel wrapped around some relays that are just sitting under my seat, uh, which is not what you want when you drag race or drive a streetcar. So I got to fix that. Uh, but the other thing is, is I realized I'm all hyped up for Drag Week 2024. I actually went back and watched the 2019 episode of Finnegan's Garage from when Tony Angelo and I won a gas. And I realized due to a couple of technical snafus, half the episode isn't even there. Like it starts and then it just goes <laughs> gone. So unless you watch the episode of Roadkill, and even that episode doesn't have the whole story. Um, you don't really know what happened in 2019 or what Tony and I went through just to get to Drag Week and then to survive it and win it. So as soon as I fix this wiring, I'm going to give you that entire episode. We'll get working on the car. We'll have a damn good time doing it. And then I'm off to Drag Week to meet Tony and try to win again. As soon as I fix this, because this, uh, this is a mess. Start by taking the towel out. Yeah, see this uh, this works. This M MSD solid state relay is replacing that broken board. Um, so we gotta. I should mount that, and I should replace the other half of that broken board and clean things up before we start a fire. So here's the deal. I wired this car with um, some relay blocks from a company called Auto Rod Controls, and. I used them for a couple of reasons. First off, I really liked the switch panel, which it's right there currently. The switches are illuminated even when they're off. Right now the car is off, so you can't see it. But you'll see that there. They go green when you're using it. I liked it. The thing I do not like about that deal, and I didn't know it at the time until I installed it, is it uses this really thin ribbon cable that is easily damaged. So. I feel like this is great for a street rod, and they do market it to drag racers and whatnot, but I feel like drag and drive events are a little too harsh for that deal. You know, that switch panel used to be mounted on the roll bar up there, and then the cable was taped to the roll bar. And over the years of removing it, painting things, fabricating, whatever it is, it was just really easy to damage the cable. So that's reason number one why I'm not thrilled with this setup. The other thing though is, and the reason we're rewiring today is this board, which has eight relays, it's controlling things like the fuel injectors. It is providing power to the ignition coils. It is providing power to the fuel pumps in the car. And it just died. I haven't even taken it out to find out why, but three of these four relays, the fuses aren't blown, but they died. And I'm guessing it might be because the circuit board cracked or something burnt underneath. but in a pinch, when I was on um, Pete Harrell's engine dyno, chassis dyno, we bypassed these and installed this MSD solid state relay. And this does the same function. It doesn't need a ribbon cable connection to trigger it. And it's just a more robust piece that I can mount to the floor and probably not worry about vibration or anything else. And basically the way it works is it's, it's a high current relay block. It, this is four relays in one. So these are your outputs. This is power in, this will go power out. These ones right here are your triggers. And so my goal today is to remove this broken uh, circuit board and panel and replace those other four relays with another one of these and then mount both of these in the floor of the car so that they're not wrapped in a towel and not dangling around. So yeah, so that's today's work. If that board is, controlling this, how, if you're getting rid of the board, how does the switch panel work still? Great question. So if you notice, there's two of them in here, right? This entire board, everything on here is triggered by the Holly Dominator ECU. Okay. This board is triggered by that switch panel. So unless I get rid of the switch panel, which I can at the moment because I don't have another one, we're still gonna use the switch panel to turn on the ignition, operate the horn, operate the starter, and operate the headlights on the car. That's all that panel does. Okay. Everything else in here, firing the injectors, turning on the fuel pumps, uh, water pump, and electric fans, that's all done. The ECU tells 
this when to trigger a relay. So we can keep that switch panel for now, unless I magically find one and order one and install it before drag week. Probably not happening. But we can get rid of just this broken board. Just tear it apart. First things first, tear it apart. And then go get all our really cool wire care tools and you know, shrink tube and... I love wiring stuff. Most people don't love wiring stuff. I love wiring stuff. I'm a nerd. I like it a lot. I got a whole schematic for this car that shows me what everything does. So it'll be painless to go back and redo it. And then we'll probably clean up this stuff because this got installed in a hurry years ago and it it dangles and it's going to get all screwed up and we'll we'll loom this nicely and hide it under the seat so that cuz our cooler goes here. Like when we road trip, the soft cooler is right there so you can reach from the seat and get into it, you know. Is that a notebook or is that a blasphemy bible? This this is the bible. This is 10 years of, you know, of stuff like we added smart coils in 2023 in October mm. oh, we blew up the trans in November of 2023 <laughs> does that mean it was the smart coils fault like we put in smart coils transmission blows up I don't know I don't know in April of 2024 we did the longer front shackles trying to make the front end of the car actually work yeah here's our coil on plug wiring Ooh, here's the schematic from when I wired the car a long, long time ago. Coolant temp, fuel pressure. These are all sensors. This is all the wiring from the Dominator ECU. These are injector wiring for our second set of injectors. Here's our outputs, so fuel pump one, two, three, four. And this is the pinout for the ECU and the color of the wire I use. So I can pretty much just go, all right, fuel pump number four is yellow with black. And I just go over there and figure out where the yellow with black wire is and which relay it went and transfer it to the next one. And then here's our relay board. So this is the four relays that go to the switch panel there. And then here is the eight relays that just goes to the ECU. Drag week rules. Lots of instructions. Okay, now let's take it apart. You know, one thing that really kind of impresses me, dude, is mm. you pretty much have that book for almost every car. Yeah, well, I have to. My memory sucks. And <laughs> it does. So many cars, and we, like, you and I will jump from project to project to project. Yeah. If I don't have a book for the car, dude, I'm not remembering what color wire I use to turn on the fuel pump in death metal. Let alone what key opens the door or what key turns the ignition on, or even if there's keys. No, most of them don't have keys for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> don't have them, can't lose them. All right, <laughs> get some tools. Thank you. My original design for this box was for it to be sealed in here so that nothing could slide from the back of the car and run into the electronics, same at the front. But what I've realized over the years is that never happens, <laughs> literally never happens. And if I didn't have this rear wall and didn't have this front wall on this box, then I could bend the sides out, slide this up and get to the bolts to get the relay panel out. So I think I'm about to uh, modify my design a little bit and uh, cut those. I'm ones. sure it will be laser straight. Well, yeah, eventually, you know. <laughs> Maybe not today, but it's got potential to be straight. So let's see. Little tin snips go through whatever that is. Oh, like butter. Oh, yeah. through that side.
drag weeks in, uh, what's today? Thursday. Today's Thursday. Drag weeks in three days. I'm taking 10 snips to my car. <laughs> 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 Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Come on, like little John says, get low. <laughs> to the window. There's a trench tunnel in my way. I need a Dremel with a cutoff tool. No, no sparks. No sparks, no sawzall. This is the way. See, the biggest problem is... There's no problems, only solutions. Well, going from this way, the metal doesn't peel up on it's peeling trying to peel this up over here see what I mean that was way better coming from that side unless we got a pair of left-handed uh, we do snippers There's nothing. We do have wires right going underneath it here. Got it. Don't want to get those. Yeah, I was about to say, let's not have another incident like we did the other day. Oh, that wasn't a zip tie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't either. I didn't see it, I just heard about it. Here, let's see. Can I just slide this thing out? Not really. They're too tight on wires. Yeah, it's kind of tight right here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Can you? Let me get underneath. Yeah. grab my other relay block and just move these four outputs and these four inputs to the relay block and then this comes out. This is our new relay box. This is going to replace this entire board. Well, two of these will. There are four solid state relays built into these. They're vibration proof. They're protected from the elements. They're fantastic. You can trigger these relays with either power or ground and you don't have to program it. All you do is pick where you're gonna put your input. The top four bosses right here, these are as if you want to use a switched 12 volt positive input. Put one in here, triggers that one. Put one in there, triggers that one. This bottom row is for ground. Let's say you're using you know, an EFI ECU or some other module that's going to send a ground signal to trigger a relay and you want that relay to send out 12 volt positive, put it in one of these down here on the bottom row. And then the last thing you have to wire is there's another terminal right here in the corner that needs a chassis ground. That's what makes this whole thing work. Uh, so basically there's four relays in here. We'll need two of these blocks to replace this entire board. One of the blocks is already in there because you know it broke before, like I said. So one by one, we'll take off the wire for our transmission gear oil pump, our injector set one, our injector set two, and then our electric water pump, and then this will come out and we can kind of clean up the wiring in here. Are these, these are outputs? Yeah, the, the large ones are the outputs the and large, the other ones are the triggers? Yeah, the large wire is the output, the small wire is the trigger, and these are all ground triggers, triggering a 30 amp 
single pole double throw relay that is normally closed. And this particular one controls the gear oil pump for our transmission. Now we already wired all this stuff with TechFlex shrink tubing from Wirecare and um, we're actually going to cut this off because this, you basically strip the uh, sheath back on the wire, shove it in there and tighten it. We won't need any terminals or anything there. So we're saving weight. It's getting lighter. It's awesome. <laughs> um, and normally I would bolt this down and then route the wires to it, except to save time, I'm just going to one by one transfer them over because that saves time having to identify what everything is. These also came from Wirecare. These are fantastic. These are from Pressmaster and they will cut wire and then they will strip wire and you can choose the thickness of the wire you're stripping right here, plus and minus, and you can choose how much of the wire you want to strip here with this. This changes the depth. Like that's if you want to strip a lot of shielding off, and that's very minimal. So first thing we're going to do is cut the terminal off this because we don't need it. And then we'll slide the shrink tube off and then uh, that's thin wire, that's medium size. We'll try it right here. Is that the technical term, medium size? Yeah, it's very medium. You know, you don't want it too big. There we go, look at that. You just squeeze it and it comes right off. I love those. I call them cheater pliers, they're fantastic. Now all we're gonna do is find our flat blade screwdriver, wherever that went, right here. Other nice thing about this MSD relay is it has diagnostic LEDs here that'll tell you uh, when something's going wrong. And it has overload protection. It has, um, if you accidentally wire it, reverse polarity, it will take care of itself for that. It'll provide a maximum of 35 amps or 140 amps total for this deal. So it's perfect for wiring high current stuff. And if you have something like some monster fuel pump that needs more than 35 amps or electric fans, you can just pair the outputs together for that deal, which is nice. Okay. Ooh, that's convenient. Yeah. So this top row again is if you want to trigger it with 12 volts, we're not reusing ground. So we're going to come down to this bottom row and this is really number four. So we're just going to go to number four and install it. Is it just that simple? Yes, it is just that easy. And after that board is out of the way and we bolt this down, I'll go back and probably shorten the wires and clean them up, but I'll know which one is which. Okay, there's that one. Now, injector set number one. It's a bummer it broke, but we're gonna end up making the car more serviceable going forward because we're definitely not mounting all this stuff the same way. <laughs> that was a nightmare. Yeah, the mounts for those MSD blocks are, make it really easy to get, to take them in and out. So how many years has the other one been in there wrapped in a... <laughs> uh, since last summer. Uh. So that's number three, uh, that's number six, so five, six. So this one then goes there. It's a little dark. Looks like it might have a little crow's night, so we'll cut it off. So basically, I know you said it's rusty and stuff, but I think we need a new one just because we kind of butchered that, getting it out. Well, I, I brought it over here because I was going to run it through the bandsaw, clean it up, make some nice cuts, and then I went, God, this thing's rusty. And then I was like, why did I make this out of steel? Feel how heavy this is? Feel that. Well, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, I'm like, what am I doing with my life here? We have aluminum. Oh. Right. I thought, we've come this far. There's holes here that we don't even need anymore. These are gonna clean up all of the wiring. So look how much smaller they are, right? So this is gonna clean up everything. Let's just get a piece of aluminum, shear it, break it, 
put four holes in it to mount it and then just start from scratch. And make it so it's easy to come in and out. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be as deep. No, it doesn't need to be as deep for sure. And it doesn't need a wall on each end. So we'll make it serviceable, you know, and lighter. I like so, it. So, yeah. That's what we're doing. Uh, and we're not going to show you all of that because I want to get to the part where we show you how we won, you know, Drag Week 2019. So we'll just go to a cool collage and time lapse and some music of all this going together. Then, you know, to the exciting part. First things first, we need to make that look like this. And I think. The cutting machine. But it weighs less. I love aluminum. That's this is lighter even though it's sturdier because it's thicker. I love science. Oh, yeah. I like it. And after you mounted everything in this, you could go back and lighten it even more if you wanted to. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so we'll do these two items here. Joe, can you take these off while I plot and plan? Look! So much better. This makes me happy. The uh, nerd, uh, obsessive ADHD guy likes the symmetry and the right angles that are going to happen with the wires in here. I like this a lot. And now that our uh, solid state relays are mounted, we can start wiring. And most of the wiring is already in the car, so we can't do much here, except we can do all of the high current uh, power distribution, so battery cables basically in short. So our battery will terminate here at this distribution block and then we'll go from this distribution block to each one of these relays. And to do that, we're going to use this really sweet, lightweight Tefzel battery cable from Wirecare. And uh, this stuff is great because it's chemically resistant, so it's great in an automotive environment. The sheath is thinner than standard battery cable that you find at your parts store, so it's lighter and it can withstand a whole lot of temperature, something like minus 50 C to plus 135 C Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's a lot. So just take it from me. It's good. <laughs> and uh, so basically what I'm going to do is cut this to length, crimp on our terminal, and then cover it in shrink flex. This stuff is rad. I want to show it to you. Um, it's shrink tube, but in this case, this has a three to one shrink ratio. So it'll go to a third of its original size. They also sell it in four to one and two to one in both red and black, which is rad. And then we're going to use this hydraulic clipper that we also got from uh, Wire Care. And this should go quick like a bunny. Should be really fun. And although this doesn't look like it, that's actually, that's actually two gauge wire. Yeah, you're pulling from the middle. Oh, we're almost to the end of this. It's time to, it's probably time to replenish. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Our most direct route. We're gonna go from here to here. So I'm gonna cut this off. Layer. And then, Make sure that fits, it does. So we're just gonna strip this just enough to get it in there, but without a bunch of exposed wire strands hanging out the connector. You don't want that. And there's probably better ways to strip this, but this is just the way I like to do it. I like to, on the bigger wire, I just, I'll use anything. I'll use a razor blade. I'll use these things and then just kind of feel my way through so that I'm not cutting through a bunch of strands and making the wire not nearly as good as it used to be. Okay. So there's that. Then we got to find the proper die set for this. 
The last thing I did was probably two gauge, so that makes sense because this is too big. And this is in metric, and it's hard for me to really read metric, so I'm not sure what it means. But uh, 25, that's the one I'm going for. And so all I'm going to do here, because I'm operating one-handed, is I'm just going to hold that in there, start crimping it, get it close, and then make sure it's actually lined up in there good. Just like that. Then I'll insert the wire. And again, what you're trying to do is get the wire in there, don't break any strands, don't shove the insulation in there, but don't let the wire hang out either. And then I can just set this on the bench. And because it's hydraulic, it's very easy to operate. There we go. Not coming off. Now, we can put some shrink flex to cover the joint. And that looks like that's probably big enough to go around that. Way longer than it needs to be. There we go. Boom. Got our Steinle heat gun here. All right, there we go. It's a strong joint, it's sealed at both ends, no strands sticking out, I like it. So, we'll put that there. The other thing I like about this wire is it's fairly stiff, so when you uh, bend it, it, uh, what? I was just gonna say, like, personally for me, like if you're gonna stack them like that on that post. You're gonna turn it upside down? Turn the upside down. The next one matches up better. All right. Just saying. Let's roll with it, let's do it. All right. I like them nice straight lines. So we're gonna bend this. Bingo. All right, one down, two more to go. You wanna do one? Sure. It's fun, I like it. Uh, it's gotta go this way. On this side. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Zip I ties. Wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel right about. Okay. Oh, fingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better. Um, the holes are uh, you know in the wrong place. Really? Yeah. Unless I use zip ties, then they're, then they're perfect. I don't have a towel wrapped around a relay block anymore, so I'm already better than I was. go folks fully wired and ready to test and more importantly ready to go to hot rod drag week 2024 but in the meantime here's a look back at our adventures from 2019 have fun i'll see you soon uh before you do anything else before you even watch another second of this video do us a favor smash the like and subscribe buttons and tell your friends and now for the fun part we won drag week yes look Teeny tiny trophy, we won Hot Rod Drag Weeks, A Gas Class 2019. We're winners. Yeah. We're never winners. Finally. We finally won something. Finally. Yes. So uh, we're celebrating because this video is all about the ridiculous week we just had at Hot Rod Drag Week where Tony Angelo and I race blasphemy for an episode of Roadkill that's coming up on the Motor Trend channel. And yeah, we slept about 19 hours in five days and destroyed everything. But we finished, we reset the A-gas record, we won our class, the car came home, it still runs. I even took my kids to school in it, because it's awesome, and to celebrate, that brand new Party Pulley t-shirt. 
That actually says A Gas Champions 2019 Hot Rod Drag Week. Yes. We're winners. And uh, this video is all about what went down. And uh, thanks for watching. Now, we're going to work on the turbo boat finally. No more working on Last Me because she's in one piece and she runs. She just needs a bath. That's it. Yeah, I don't even care about that. Like, yeah, whatever. I'll drive it dirty as long as it runs. I'm glad yours still runs. We'll talk about yours next time. <laughs> his, his didn't quite make it. Might have been the third gear trailer burnouts that did it. I don't know. Call me crazy. Don't do more than a dozen. I don't see how it could. I don't see how it could bend with a lighter bar on the car. I don't know. It's crazy though. We did it, dude. High five, we did it. <laughs> broke the entire drivetrain. <laughs> yeah, we raced John Chase and broke the Hemi, the G-Force. Yep, broke reverse. And the nine inch. But thanks to the dudes at Quick Performance, we got a new housing. That's way too nice. It's better, car. it's better than the old one. See how they back cut this so you get more weld area? than if you just welded it right there. I think that helps. Plus, they gusset the crap out of the inside of it. So this tube is welded here and then several inches further out here, and there's a bunch more surface area there. Not to mention there's a killer back brace on this bad boy. Yeah, well, and just look at the top. You have a triangle there, you have a triangle here, this is a stock style original one. There's nothing here. You know, it's welded here and welded in here, but you don't have the back brace. You don't have the triangular gussets. Like, it was only a matter of time <laughs> before I guess we bend that well, one. I mean, you gotta think. I mean, the size slick you have on there with a, you know, with a stick shift car, dude. Yeah. That thing takes a lot of pressure. Back in the game. Now all we need is a Hemi. Cause drag weeks, like, I don't know, 30 days away. Newburn and I are building a new fuel cell, dual fuel fuel cell, and we're finalizing the placement of the fuel pumps. And meanwhile, Cotton's over here. Mad science in this. That's like science. Look at this. Well, what's science. crazy is hold when on, you put hold the... On, hold on. Look at the science. The science. So that's dry ice what on top of sound deadening material with a little bit of isopropyl rubbing alcohol mixed in. And that is freezing all of the sound editing material so that Mike can just scrape it off. You just hit it and it shatters. We've tried nitrous, which works, <laughs> which worked pretty good, but was expensive. And uh, now Mikey has come up with this solution, dry ice. It's working, that part's done. Feel the, feel the your rocker panel. Dude, that's so cool looking. The race side is done. Just need to water test it real quick. See if there's any pinholes. If it passes the water test, and we'll pressure test it. It's gonna leak, now's the time to leak. It's easy to fix. This is my ghetto fabulous pressure testing setup. Pancake style air compressor, a regulator that will adjust down to approximately five PSI. Two would be better. And then air hose into the tank, gaff taped. Hopefully this is airtight. And then spray a bottle of water, soapy water. Got a little Don dish soap in there. We'll crack open the regulator, put some air in the tank, spray every seam and see, does she leak? If she does, we'll go back over the weld one more time. If she doesn't, we move on. It'll be a little hard to see, but right there in that corner is a leak. And this is gonna be the joint where fuel cell number two meets fuel cell number one, so I can fix that there, no problem. We'll continue our search. Got a lot of practicing TIG welding aluminum this week. There's Blasphemy's new fuel cell. 16 gallons on the left of pump gas, five gallons on the right, a couple of NASCAR switching valves there so we can run E85 in the race tank, pump gas in this tank, 
two Holley 450 liter per hour fuel pumps and a standing unit. So I'll know how much gas is in there. It's just that easy. Calipers. Nailed it. 50. Beautiful. Finishing touches on the gas tank right here. Got our fuel selector valves mounted. Two Holly fuel pumps. Putting some rubber across the top of the tank so that it won't rub on anything under the bottom of the car. Ready to install it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be weird to have a gas cage. And... Yeah, we're gonna have a gas cage finally <laughs> in this car. It's gonna be amazing. Big moment. Yeah. Back on the ground for the first time in months. It is in one piece again, mostly. That's sexy, though. Yeah. That's real sexy. Thank you. That's like real sexy. You're talking about me, right? No. No. No? I'm talking about that. Oh. That's pretty good. As long as it doesn't leak. <laughs> Stop with the negative talk. Six days to drag week. We'll make it. starts tomorrow. We're five hours away in North Carolina at Harrell Engine and Dyno. Putting the tune on blasphemy. Drag week. It was a lot like day one of Drag Week last year. It's raining. <laughs> and I'm already sunburned. Look at that. Oh. Taking an opportunity during the rain delay to modify the attempted murder Nova a bit. We are so ready to have fun on Drag Week. Last of these together. I think we've made four passes since Drag Week last year. 
car has been in pieces all year. Three days ago, we threw it together, went to Harrell Engine and Dyno, guys who rebuilt the motor, and um, the water's not commingling with the oil. Put down a good number on the chassis dyno. During test and tune yesterday here, this thing ripped an 875 at 159, and it seems healthy, man. We're gonna do the damn thing. So, Drag Week 2019 starts now. None. Yeah, rained all morning. Rain stops, it's beautiful out here. Thought we're ready to go. Fired it up. Yeah, alternator not working. So we're changing the staging lanes, and then we're gonna go lay one down here as soon as the other 400 cars ahead of us go. Here comes Finn again. So we didn't get very far day one here at Drag Week. It's about, I don't know, 8 o'clock. Just left the track. Got to the first gas station. No charging system right now. We've got a belt on there that's too long and it's slipping. And our battery just died. So we're going to take care of that. Right now we're charging the battery. We're going to go find, hopefully, the right size belt. If we can't find it, we'll just strap the generator to the trunk lid of the car hook up the battery charger and see how far we can get. Because we just went 852 today. We're leading our class and we ain't about to quit over a dumb alternator. And oh boy. It's about midnight. We're at checkpoint number one. Yay us. I thought we'd be dead last, but no. More drag week people here. Yeah, gas or dodge truck. Gremlin. It's stuff. Tony's in a coma. He's very sleepy. He said it's hard to sleep in blasphemy. He's right. He's right. Cars around good though. Staying cool. Wawa's popping off at two in the morning. Man. Look at all these cool drag week hot rods. Two AM, no one's quitting. <laughs> that is how you celebrate reaching the final checkpoint of day one. <laughs>
up in the air. All right, just letting you know. Back to you. Yeah. Here's your 60 second drag week day two update. Uh, yesterday, killed it. Ran an 852, hit the highway, had nothing but problems. Charging systems, ECU. I mean, even the wheels got stuck on the car. We couldn't get the drag slicks off at the drag strip. They pretty much welded themselves to the studs. Got to the hotel at 4.30 this morning. Got to the next track, Cecil. We didn't make a hit, I think, until 1.30 or something like that. And the track looked downhill, and I was genuinely worried we were gonna break out and run an 849, which we can't because I don't have enough roll cage. But it didn't matter because at about 1,000 feet, at 160 miles an hour, the back window lifted up, even though it's bolted in. Then the trunk lid got ripped off by the wind, and we slowed down to 155 miles an hour at 875. We're back on the road at the first checkpoint. All good. Soldiering on. So it's day two, Hot Rod Drag Week. It's about one in the morning. Just got to the second checkpoint. One boy rolls up in the Dunkin' Donuts truck, and I'm like, yo, man, I'd love a donut. So he's giving us donuts. Thank you. Oh, you got sprinkles? I can't believe what I'm I can't either. You watch roadkill every day. You like roadkill? Ah, uh, French crawler, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite. I'll take two of them. <laughs> and he likes roadkill. This is amazing. <laughs> He's a fan. It's wonderful. It's meant to be. I love Drag Week. A huge fan. Oh, dude, they're wow. fresh heat. That looks amazing. Dude, I'm going to do that, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What's your name? Thank you. John. John, thank you. you. John? No problem. No problem. I just, I, I can't even John rules. John is awesome. <laughs> trying to do this all week. Get to the hotel at a decent hour. Before midnight. And have purple monkey dishwasher that you and your wife got me. Care of my lovely wife Bridget. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Bridget. Good.
on Finnegan. The car has no first gear. Oh. So he is currently trying to make a pass just to remain in competition. Remains to be seen whether he's going to try and make a hard pass launching in second or whether he's just going to roll it down the track. Here, what can happen in second gear, right? Let's say, let's say he tries to go the hard pass in second. He's going to wheelie bars on this thing. He can kill the clutch. He can kill two things. He can kill the clutch or if he hooks the tire in second gear with a big RPM launch, that thing could try to stand up and flip over backwards, basically. I'm going with clutch. So he does an RPM to fix too much. He manages to get it off the line. He's been driving down. He said he's going to go 10 8 just like my grand. Drag Week update out here at MIR 7:45 at night. Still at the track, haven't left because we started out our day today in the burnout box at a decent hour. I think it's about nine or 9:30 in the morning, just the earliest we tried to make a hit all week. Blew up first gear in the G-force. Borrowed a gear set from Andy Starr from the Hillborn. Borrowed a couple of tools from Jared Scott with the Ranchero, who he and I are battling for first place in Gasser A. And uh, Tony Angelo and I and a couple other people rebuilt the trans, slammed it in the car, got there in time to make two passes. One blew the tires off. The second, I pedaled it and ran a 9.30, which is enough to stay in first. And uh, got back to the pit and had to pull the trans out again because we had a throwout bearing issue. And yeah, we're just now getting ready to leave. It'll be another long night, but we'll make it. Just left the track in Maryland. It's pouring rain. You really don't want to drive blasphemy in the rain. You really don't want to tow a trailer with blasphemy in the rain. So we're stuck here at a gas station. 140 miles to go when we get to day five, track five, the end of drag week. We'll make it. The thing that I don't get is how it rained inside my toolbox. My toolbox was closed during the rainstorm. It's a mystery. I blame Drag Week. 3.30 in the morning. Still haven't hit the second checkpoint. Oh, man. 
It's gonna be a long night. Like that, but it, I don't think it is. You good? Okay. Is this supposed to be spring loaded? The other one is. Most of them are. That one's not spring loaded. The new one is though, right? The new one is, yeah. This one's that can't be right. We're changing it out, Andy. I found a spare. I didn't even know I had a spare, but I found one. I think that works right. We'll test it. Last checkpoint. Hi. It's so late. It's five in the morning. That's a.m. That was Drag Week 2019. Epic run with my guy, Tony Angelo. And like I said, getting ready for Drag Week 2024. We're actually here now, and here's a teaser of a massive movie we're filming for you guys. It's coming out soon. Let's do it. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. We are here at Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park. It is Drag Week 2024, presented by Gear Vendors and Mickey Thompson. 
Day two of Hot Rod Drag Week. I'm remarkably calm. Even after the rocker arm broke yesterday and we fouled some spark plugs and I just had two different locals come up to me and tell me to be careful because the track doesn't hook and to try to be safe. <laughs> I feel all right. I think this is going to go well. Now we're talking. These are two class combatants going to run off each other side by side here. Finnegan and the only guy that's within spin distance of them on the racetrack now. Wayne Baker having run 879 earlier today. Finnegan having run 870. So these two guys uh, are running for the same trophy and they're also now on the same racetrack simultaneously. It's a good little moment here. Car went way off, big wheelie, slammed down, he backed way out of it. A lot more track than we thought there was gonna be. Uh, we're gonna try again, we're gonna make some adjustments, try again. Should be just, if we didn't break anything in the front end, which I'm a little worried about, make sure it's all square, add some fuel, take some base clutch out of it, send it.